<coughs> Original Godfather 5 or jungle is another place. Yeah, run time ball level thing. See ball level on the lick. A ball level making nice. Yeah? Alright, one stop. I mean that. Alright, so these last two topics are going to be NFL based. So here we go, fives. <clears throat> you let me know while Guan this. I'm just reading. I have no idea why Guan. So here we go. <clears throat> Will um Cali Caleb Williams be the answer to the Bears undaring search? Caleb, Caleb, Caleb Williams. Same Ke Caleb. Ke Ke Caleb. Caleb Williams. Will, Will is it wait? Is it hold on a minute? Is his name Will? Or is it just Caleb? Caleb Caleb Will Caleb Williams. He was a number one pick this year right. in the draft. All right. All right, cool. Let me read this. So, will Caleb Williams be the answer to the unending franchise QB? There's no franchise with a longer tenure than the Chicago Bears. Chicago that's Bears. Right. That's right, yeah? Though not quite yeah. as long as its history, the club search for a bona fide Bears franchise quarterback has been a lengthy and fruitless endeavor. The first time in a common draft era since 1967, the Bears selected the number one overall pick, choosing USC quarterback Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams, yes. Yeah. Has already made history with his um, selection alone, but the Bears are hoping he's the answer for their seamless, seamlessly endless search for an authentic franchise QB. The closer look thanks to the NFL research, shows that how significant Williams' selection was and daunting history, he's turning to move the franchise past. So, he made it on April the 25th. The Bears drafted Williams, making him the franchise's first number one overall pick since 77 years prior. Chicago took running back Bob Finnemore. Is that right? In yeah, Bob Finnemore, yeah. In 1947, the club is hoping for a better fortune all of these decades later as the blonde bomber, Finnamore, played just one season. Evidence take bit and the Bears have been at the quarterback position in, uh, is evident in the history in hindsight. A year later, in 1948, the Bears acquired the rights to another player nicknamed the blonde bomber with the number three overall pick, QB Bobby Lane. Lane lasted a year, Bears, before eventually setting for a Hall of Fame career with the arch rivals, Detroit. Detroit Lions. So right. Is that a fact that the Chicago Bears just had a, a good QB? Is that a thing? Yes. No, no. Right. Okay. Now, this is, not, this, is down to, this is down to Chicago Bears franchise, their front offices. Yeah? That's what this is down to. This is about the front offices selecting fucked up coaches who don't know fuck all. Yeah. Now, they drafted Justin Fields three years ago. Justin Fields, come on. They traded up to get Justin Fields. Traded up. Yeah, they took Trevor Lawrence, right? He went to Jacksonville Jaguars. And he, he's getting some mad, mad money, and he's never been to, he's never really been to a player. But anyway, that's, that's neither here or there. They take, they traded to go for Justin Fields. Now they done Justin Fields dirty. They draft the brother, but don't give the boy no protection. Not your offensive line are shit. Your tackles, your guards, your center, they're all shit. You, you ain't got a number one wide receiver to throw the ball to. You ain't got a real running back to fucking hand the ball off to. So basically, they've handicapped, they've, they've already handicapped Justin Fields. So basically, they've sabotaged Fields. Let him play for three years. We're not going to give you. Uh, we're not going to make you sign up on your four-year contract, so we're going to trade you. And they've done, they've done Justin Fields dirty, right? And Justin was such a humble brother, Justin Fields. Now, Caleb Williams now, on the other hand, he's bash. Justin, Caleb Williams is, is a bash guy, like, with his fingernails, with his, ooh, get his nails painted up, and oh, look at him, he's a bit queer, he's a bit this, and he's like, I don't give a fuck what you say. Right about now, I've seen that boy play, and that boy can ball out. He can ball out. You know, sometimes some people say you must play hero ball and what the rest of it. But right about now, if this guy play hero ball and he wins me fucking games, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I don't give a damn. The brother could have done this. Caleb Williams could have easily said, well, I don't want to go play for the Bears. What are the Bears going to do? There's nothing they can do because he gave him said, you know what? I'm going to stay in college. I pick up my NIL money because he already got money before he comes to the league. I don't, I've got, 
The guy's got 10, 15 million leaving college, you know, Shit, before he signs an NFL contract, you know. So I already got, I'm, I'm quizzing already. I've got money. It's not money. I already got it? money, though, bro. I got 15 million before I even start my professional contract. I got 15 million. I've, I've already, I've got, I've got more money than players on the roster. Crazy. Before I start, and I'm only 22. I'm only 22 and I've got 15 banks. I've got 15 stacks already. You're not going to pay a man that on that contract in Chicago. You're going to pay a man that money. So I've got this up. He had the deacon. It's easy to say, bro, you know, I was just staying another fucking year. Fuck you, you Stay another year. Chicago, you're going to have to trade my trade the number or you got to trade trade me. I get a bunch of plethora of players because I ain't going to play for you. Now, Caleb Williams, I see him play some great games. He, he is good. The boy is good. But only this time round, the Bears have surrounded him with other players. They just got Keith, they just got uh, Keenan Allen yeah, from uh, from San Diego Chargers. You just got um, who was it? You got a couple of men who you just bought. You got some offensive linemen because they know, right? They sabotage Justin Fields, so we're going to bring in these players around Caleb Williams because we need to protect this guy. But the guy is he's that good. He is that good, that brother. As long as he gets the protection, he listen, even if the protection breaks down, he's gonna put it at the back. He'll fucking scramble like Lamar Jackson and fuck up defenders. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna be, oh my god, I'm glad we got this guy, but our linemen are shit. Same. And as a lineman, the offensive lineman, they all know right about now that you are all on audition. My man gets sacked so many times, you fucking out, bro. If he gets sacked so many times, brother, you're the one letting it happen. If he has to scramble out the pocket and the pocket breaks down, brother, you man off. I went to training you to get another lineman in. So, so basically, the linemen who they're going, they know that their jobs are on the line to call here. It, you know, pardon the pun, but their jobs are on the line, the offensive line. Because if this guy gets hurt, remember, he's a franchise QB, you know, if he gets hurt, know this the money you was getting, you ain't getting no more, bro. You are out of a job, bro, because that's down on you as an offensive line. Now, Caleb Williams, I am looking forward to what he does this season because I'm expecting Chicago could get. Yeah, yeah, I'll get. Yeah, what are you expecting? What's going on? I'm expecting. Listen, is that, is with it, the right, is, co- is, with is the right coaching, coaching, is this pick put in, put in Chicago with Detroit and. No, 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 Detroit, no, you spoke about Bobby Lane, right? Yeah. Now, Bobby Lane was at Chicago. He went to Detroit Lions. I know you a crazy story about this guy, Bobby Lane. Now, he was at Detroit Lions back in the days there. One, one, one or two championships. Now, the Detroit Lions got rid of him. The man turned around and said to Detroit Lions franchise, oh, you wanna, oh you're going to fuck with me? Hey, what now? I'm going to put a curse on your clock. You guys are never going to win a game or win nothing for 50 years. Damn. So said, so done. They never want to fuck all for 50 years. So just Damn. the other day. Just the other day to go break the curse. They have to do oh, some, some doping. Obvious. I used to some spiritual shit to break the curse, bro. The players said, you're not winning shit. For That's how years. deep that bro. Damn. Yeah, King. That's how deep. And just the other day. <laughs> yeah, bro. The curse got broken. Just the other day, the Detroit Lions was in the championship game against uh, San Francisco Niners. Mm. They, 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 robbed the, they robbed the Lions. They robbed the Lions of that game because what they wanted, they wanted a repeat Super Bowl, yeah, of the Niners and Kansas City Chiefs. And like I keep saying again about the, the eyes. So because Travis Kelsey goes out with Taylor Swift, we need Taylor Swift. Uh, 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 followers. We need her followers. We need more eyes to the game. Everybody knows Taylor Swift around the world, but no one knows Detroit Lions. <laughs> same, same. All right. To uh, sell the right. shit. Yeah, oh. to sell it. So I'm looking forward to Caleb Williams. He will do good things. I'm do just, I'm just hoping that he doesn't have to do it by himself. Do you think he's strong? Do you think he's but, ready? He's but, not there, but do you think he's gonna, he's gonna move? He's on? just not there. But he's got no choice. He's, he's signed a five-year contract. They're, they're, that's because, brother, he's the best thing since Patrick Mahomes. So you're not letting this guy go. We're going to give you a five-year contract rather than a three-year contract. We are getting five, bro. Because we know 
you're going to fulfill this five and you know what's going to happen once you're done in your once you get into your third year of your contract and the team is winning you know what's going to happen really? tear that contract we're going to renegotiate yeah another and he's going to be one he's going to, he's going to be one of the first billionaire quarterbacks Patrick Mahomes is already near that Same. Patrick Mahomes is only 24. He's only close to a billionaire. He sat, he sat, he sat a half a billion contract, you know, for 10 years. Half a billion, you know, 24. You're sponsored by Adidas. Brother, you don't spend that money. You don't spend, brother, you don't spend a wage. You don't spend your wages, bro. Yeah, that's a stacking. That's a stack. You spend it's in money. You've got club sponsors. you got yeah. food sponsors. You got all these sponsors, TV adverts, and all. But you don't touch your, you don't see your wages, bro. You know what? And, and you don't even probably look at the bonus money because you know rich people <laughs> get shit for free in it. Everyone wants that to as well. Their shit. That so is, that, that comes into it. Yeah, you have to that also money. comes into it. <laughs> you would, that all comes into it because in the NFL, which and which they should do, which was which I was going to say about Wolf and Zaha, which kind of what goes Russ parallel with Wolf and Zaha about the taking his pay cut. With Will Wasaha, it should be incentive level. So, all right, give me my 200 bags. And in order for me to make up my 300 bags, right, every goal I score in any competition, we get if we get into Europe, you got to pay me more money. If I score in Europe and we're in the Champions League or, or UEFA or conference, that's more money. Than so it's incentive level. So as a player, boy, I need, bro, hey, well, you guys, don't fuck with my shit. Don't, don't fuck with my money, bro. I'm trying to get to you a conference because it's a bag of money. Fuck us. Me and all of us, we're all going to get money from this. So, so it's in the best interest as a team that we win. I don't care who scored, brother. If I score and I get 50 bags, bro, brother, whoever assisted me, you're getting that too. There's a piece of money. This is, come on, this is, this is Coach Prime. Coach Prime. Play special teams, which is kick return and punt return. Mm -hmm. He said this to the player: every player on the special teams, from your blocking and I get to the end zone, I'm gonna give every man a Rolex watch. <laughs> <laughs> every man like what? A Rolex watch, brother. Every all eleven men out there, we're licking down man like last up ten pen bowling. <laughs> I want my, I want my legs, bro. <laughs> I want my legs, kid. The man is tearing down man. He gets to the end zone. Get to the end zone, team with here right now. Let's what, um, get your boxes, you open up your box, your legs. Every man who's, who's on uh, uh, special teams, he's got a legs, you know. Raf, here one now. I want to play a special team with Prime, you know. <laughs> That's it. But what is that? Was part of the, is this part of the incentive? Yeah, here what now. I'm a special team. Who wants to play special teams? Me. <laughs> Me. I'm the special teams. Yeah, because it's incentive leaden. Yeah, no, I'm not going to put Yeah, no, I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. All right, I've got some others for you. It's not going to be all 20, but the next thing is the most, most 20 and make about the NFL one. So, oh, we'll man. Original Godfather 5 or Jungle is another place. Yeah, run time, bar level thing. See, bar level on the lick. A bar level looking nice. Yeah, all right, one stop. I mean that. All right, so let me just read. This app to use on screen. It's on screen, actually. Let me put it on screen, but I'll read it anyway. So, Tim Timbo Tebow, you know him? Tebow. Tim Tebow. Oh, Tim Tebow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tim Tebow. Yeah, man, he's a good guy. Tim Tebow could be one of the best QBs in the NFL, right? It says here. He's retired. Okay, Timbo. This, this is one of the debates, right? Timbo was college quarterbacks, but so was Matt. Linton, Lint, Lint, aunt, Lint, aunt. Lindstrom, Matt Lindstrom. It's not Lindstrom. It's Lin Art. L E I. -N -N. Oh yeah, Matt Lena, Matt, Matt Lena, Matt Lena, Matt Lena. Lena. Yeah, Matt Lena. he played the USC. Yeah, Matt Lena, he played the USC Trojans. Yeah, these days Matt Lena is the biggest. Uh, is the biggest life accomplishment is breaking up. Jamili, I don't even know what that is. Timbo is a nice. Is is what? Timbo did a nice job leading the Denver Broncos back, Broncos. From, back from the dead in the second half of last season. But of the six consecutive teams he beat, not a single one of them finished with a record above 500. People like Timbo's story and many of them like his wholesomeness and his message. But they want to believe that he could be great more than the evidence actually suggested he, that is true. So it, 
Could he have been one of the greats or people just like him? Tim Tebow, yeah. He was, uh, Tim Tebow was like, he was like, I was an extrovert. I, I, I used to extrovert because of, because of his upbringing. Now, Tim Tebow was brought up in a house, called him Mormon, very religious, very religious. His parents then never let him go to school, into the, into the, the society schools. He was homeschooled. Like in New York, he's homeschooled by his family. Very, you know, to you know, to the Bible, Christian, his faith and them thing. And he's not, he doesn't swear, he don't cuss, he don't drink, none of those things in. Now, which goes back to the gestures we were speaking about earlier in the earlier part segment, yeah. Okay. Now, Tim Tebow, he would go to the end zone before a game and go on his knee and pray. Now <laughs> Right. Look, I was just guessing. So, so, he's he's got a guy and all that, yeah. Right. So he goes and pray. So he's going to end zone, prays, scores a touchdown, celebrate the guys, goes and, and does a knee and prays. Now tell me something. If you're going to do Jude Bellingham and this Turkish guy, right, for these gestures, Tim Tebow done that, and there was a Muslim, I was a guy that was Abdullah. Abdullah, he played for he played for Detroit Lions and he played for Las Oakland Raiders, now Las Vegas Raiders. His name is uh, uh, Amir, Amir Abdullah. Yeah, you're running back. Now, I think he played the Kansas City Chiefs as well. What he does, he scored a touchdown. And you know the Muslims, they'll get their carpets out and they'll do, you know, do their, their prayer. Yeah. Now, they took that as an offense. This is the guy in the NFL. He, they took it as an offense. They went to, they find this guy, you know, and they really wanted to get this guy really kind of, they kept sabotaging. Because the man went to the end zone, he did, he, he did the same prayer gesture, just like Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow is a Christian one, my man does his Muslim one. But you're going to discriminate and prejudice the man because he's doing his Muslim yeah. one. Yep. yep. As a gesture. Yep. As a gesture. This shit has got too, it's fucking far, it's, it's ridiculous now. And Tim Tebow is, is such a good guy. He don't toss out players, he, don't, he won't t -t speak ill or bad about a player. But he'd be honest and he'd be truthful. And I loved, and I loved Tim Tebow and he's, and he's well revered and well liked amongst the players. Same. He's well liked amongst, you know, all the players he's ever played against or played with. He's well revered. But it's just, again, the media makes it Matt Lionheart, you're a flop. You're a flop. That's the basic, uh, basic truth of it. You're a flop. He was a great QB in college, but that does not translate into the professional ranks, bro. That's like man coming up out of the academy. And you're coming to the professional ranks with the Henri's and the Ronaldinos and Cristiano Ronaldo, and you know your game better be up. And if your game's not back up, you're out. Yeah, you're going right, right back yeah. to where you started, bro. Right back. That's it. That's it. All right. Next one I got for you is <clears throat> the Patriots didn't deserve to win the Super Bowl. The tuck Which one? Rule. The tuck rule. I don't. I can't. I don't. It's X X X I. One number is that twelve? That's, oh, that's Super Bowl. That's Super Bowl. It's X X three as Super Bowl thirty thirty one. Okay, so, so they're saying the tuck rule, the infamous tuck rule, the most I don't even know what that is. Stroke of luck in the New England's Patriot history. The tuck rule is what began Tom Brady's quest. Is that right? Right. Tom yes, Brady, that's correct. Right? I'm just gonna. That's correct. Up. I know you know. What right. You're talking about, isn't it? Yeah. So, should they have won? Did they deserve it? Right. No. Oh, th again, this is where it comes to. People like Roger Goodell and them not on this team. You remember what I said? What's the NFL mantra slogan? Protect the shield. Protect the shield. Now, before that game, there was nothing in the rule book saying about no tuck ball. There's nothing in the rule book. They made it up as they went along. They made it up in that game. They made it up in that game. Charles Woodson, Charles Woodson comes around on a blitz. Brady put the ball in his head. He lifts the ball out of Brady's hand. He takes the ball out of Brady's uh, hand. I think we've I think we've watched the video of this. Yeah, go right. on. He see. knocks the ball out of Brady's hands, yeah? And it's a fumble. It's a fumble. Yeah? Clear fumble. The whole stadium, the whole world, all the networks can see. They go, oh no. So what happens now? Again, the the V the VAR, you got people in your ear, in it. So the NFL's gone down and said, listen. We don't give a listen, bro. I've got to protect the shield. Listen, ref. We don't give a fuck. Just call it the tuck rule. The, the, the players, 
What the fuck's the tuck rule? There's no such thing as a tuck rule. Oh, wait, he had his ball, he had his hand going forward, and he tried to put it, bring it back in. But there was never a rule written like that in the game anyway. Uh, and it's written right there at that time. That's wrong. That's wrong. How did how not everyone just walk off? That's that's the fake thing. Again, okay. if you walk off, you're gonna bring the game into disrepute, innit? But this is what I'm talking about. They bring the game into distribute. Not, not, make, making up rules on the spot ain't, ain't on the, the spot, game bro. Brother, <laughs> like I said, the slogan is protect the shield. That's protect crazy. the shield. We don't care about nothing else, right? This is it it, 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 it for me. It really drives me nuts because the rule was never there. There was never a rule. They made it up on the day of the play. Of the play. Not even, they didn't even make the rule before the game started. They made it as the play happened. When it happened, oh, it was a chuck rule. No one's ever heard of it. You got players who play for 10, 15, 20, what are you talking about? There's no rule. They give you the rule books when you go to the NFL. They give you all the, the thing. And every man has to read you all these rules and all that. So they, they, it's not there. It was never there. That's so, you know, crazy. that's corruption as far as I'm concerned. Right? Yeah. I listen. You know, that's like saying they're just making up stuff in the, in the Premier League. Imagine, I was going to pick my team. Imagine Arteta pick up the ball to hand it to his player. And they're like, ah, oh, the managers yes. are not allowed to touch the football. That's a right. play to Tottenham. What? Blood, you have to you have to walk off. Everyone has to leave the stadium. The, the fans have to complain. You can't let well, people make well. something in front of you. Exactly, yeah, I mean, right? Like, you know, like, imagine, imagine you was in a crowd of people, vibes. Imagine, imagine we went to go and do, you know, one of them protest things that we do. Imagine we stopped for a second to have a cigarette, and then police walk over and say, you know what? Today, no one wearing a hat is out to smoke cigarettes. What? <laughs> really? You can't, you can't do that. There's cameras here. Everyone's watching. Everyone's so, watching. You know, with all this sport and thing, if they can do that with the cameras on. What do they do when the cameras are not on? Oh, Jesus exactly. Jesus and here's the craziest thing, Karma. Here's, 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 here's the craziest thing. Now that Tom Brady's retired, Tom Brady admitted to, yeah, it was it was a fumble. <laughs> and he retired with seven Super Bowl rings. I went, you know what? Yeah, it was, it, it was a fumble. He admits it, it was a fumble. <laughs> Can't take the ring. But too late now. You got the ring. The game's done. It's a fumble. <laughs> He's admitted it. He said, "Yeah, it's a fumble." But you can only say, "Well, she's retired, isn't it?" Yes, it was a fumble. It's a fumble. Yes, it, it was a fumble. I, I'm saying it because it happened to me. It was a fumble. Yeah, he admitted yeah. it. But they're, they're, but they're never going to go back on it. They're never going to go back on it. They're going to I'm Tom Brady up there. And let me say this: Tom Brady wasn't very liked by the NFL. They kept trying to boost him up, and they boosted him up. And Tom Brady was like, "I'll take the boost in." Yeah, you can boost me up as much as you like. At the end of the day, none of you, none of you comes like me. You, you allowed me to be, you allowed me to go through six rounds, beat a hundred, beat a hundred and ninety-nine. So basically, all you ball clubs never had no love for me. You had no faith in me. Now that I'm the Super Bowl, it's all winning, best QB. Oh, we love Tom, no, you never. No, you so why didn't you pick him? Yeah. Why didn't you pick him? All the players that you picked before Tom Brady are all retired before Tom Brady. And Super Bowl ring less. They all retired before Brady. <laughs> all of them. And that's why I rate Tom Brady, bro. Next one. Yeah. The, the, the title of this one is Running Backs Work in the NFL. Perhaps someday one of them will prove us wrong. Perhaps a few years from now, Robert Griffin III will be some formidable and so why we didn't believe the power of the right. But for don't lie. Very few running backs are able to achieve long term running quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, sometimes it's because they become too worn down by injuries, especially concussions. Sometimes it's because they because when they get to the NFL, they find that their passing game is too weak or underdeveloped to be effective, and they are relying too heavily on the run, which again leaves them far more vulnerable to injuries. We love dual threat quarterbacks. Oh, Bullshit. Hold on, because the skill set them but the skill set the skill set seems far more dynamic and exciting um, than the average run of the mill gunslinger. Yeah, pocket passes they call it. They call it pocket passing. 
but isn't it also possible that the dual threat QBs rely far too much on themselves and don't utilize their teammates effectively as a traditional QB? As for now, Michael Vick's been the Q the NFL's most successful running quarterback. Right, so which is it. I'm on, glad you said that. Of, he's on the verge of getting benched for the in favor rookie. So there's that. So right. now Michael, right, now Michael Vick. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Back in the day, they had a quarterback named Roger Starback and you had Frank Tarkenton. Them men that run around a blood club pitch like greyhounds. Yeah, but they big those guys up. They big up those guys. Up. And Frank Tarkenton, he was a great QB, but he never won far court. Right? So, it, so, so it's cool when Roger Starbuck was doing it, and it's cool when Frank Tarkenton was doing it. But when Michael Vick's doing it, and Lamar Jackson's doing it, and Russell Wilson's doing it, you, 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 oh, we don't like this running style of being in the pocket. Brother, most quarterbacks, their injuries come from standing fucking still in the pocket. That's where they get their injuries. Brother, as I always say, you cannot fucking hit something that you can't catch. You can't hit something that you can't see. So they try to, you know, push this the line. Oh, you get more injuries, don't you fucking die? How, you, how am I going to get injured if I'm running? If no one can't touch me, how the fuck am I going to get injured? That make that make sense. You don't get injured. Oh, the wait, worst wait, horrific wait. injuries. So wait, explain the most horrific you. injuries I've ever seen of QBs is when they stand in the pocket. They get head slapped. They get crushed to the ground. 350 pound lineman. You're standing. Nah. <laughs> That's <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> I'm standing up with a few hundred pounds. I'm getting out of there, bro. Wait, 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 I'm so up, bro. Explain to me, because you know, I know. Explain to me what, what, what is that debate about? What, what are they saying? Right. They want the they're saying this because this right, versus this. this. Do you, you see, okay, as a as a pocket passer, you have to be able to throw the ball. Yes, I, I, that is hundred percent. You have to be able to throw the ball. Right. Right. You have to be able to throw the ball now. There's a there's a uh, uh, the only black QB in the in the Hall of Fame. His name is Warren Moon. Okay. Warren Moon, yeah, had to go to Canada. They didn't even select this man. That listen, that man, as far as I'm concerned, he he's the man who, who throws the best spiral ever. When I mean, when I say, boy, this man can spin the ball in a Warren Moon can spin the ball better. Warren Moon, please. Now, my man had to go to Canada because I didn't want to pick him. He goes to Canada and wins five great cuts, which is the equivalent of the Super Bowl. Five, you know. The man's in the Hall of Fame in Canada, right? He's the first free agent. So when he, he's contracts for instance, Edmonton, he wins five great cup finals. He wins them. Now, he's a free agent. Come back to the NFL. So that's playing like Ross. So he was a player like, Everybody was oh, sign here, sign here, sign. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go Houston Oilers. Houston Oilers prepared to take him and pay him. My man made Houston Oilers a he made Houston Oilers go on our way. Now Houston Oilers is now Tennessee Titans because they moved from Houston. And then Houston, you got the Houston Texans, which is a which is a replacement team for the Houston Oilers. So Warren Moon was there. And he had to, and Warren Moon was sick, and he was a pocket passer. He was a scrambler like Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson. He's not one of those guys. He sat in the pocket and throws the ball. And, and then you still want to have a guy like this guy. Listen, there's no better pure passer than Warren Moon ever. Cam Newton was another guy. Cam Newton, 250 pounds, big, red, red, he was like a linebacker, playing quarterback. Man, don't even want to tackle this guy. Wait, wait so is, you said, is Moon better than. Brady. In terms of spinning the ball, yeah, he is. But with Brady, Brady had things put in place for him. He had things put in place for him. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, Tom Brady himself, like I said, the man's a winner because they never check. The man's got heart. And that's what they don't check. They don't check your heart, bro. That's it. Yeah, all the other skills are running, throwing, passing. Brother, heart, bro. That's what they failed to check that man. What's in that man's heart, bro? All right. Next I'm, up, I'm, 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 you got what? You got something else? Aaron, all right. You got Aaron Rodgers. 
Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is great. Aaron Rodgers will scramble. Aaron Rodgers, and he's got great, and he's got the best deep ball. Aaron Rodgers, he's at the New York Jets right now. Best mm -hmm. deep ball. He will scramble if he has to. And they get down on Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah, you want to go on one Super Bowl. You're three time the, uh, of offensive player of the year, player of the year, but you still can't win shit. You've only ever won one Super Bowl. And they keep coming up at him. He's like, all right, cool, don't worry. But, all right, it's all right. He's a bit of an extrovert as well. He's like, fuck all that. I smoke my weed. I do my hand on the I don't care what you say. Say what you want to say. I know who I am. I've got the best pure deep ball ever in the game. <laughs> same, you know what I'm saying? Same. And it still come down. And, but like I said, in today's game, Karma, all NFL teams have to have a scrambling quarterback. Because why? Remember, we've had this discussion before. Because the defensive tackle, the defensive end, the middle linebacker, they are so fast that brother, like you've got three seconds to get that ball out of your hand. Three to five seconds to get that ball out of your hand. If it's after six, seven, and eight, you're dead. It's over for you. It's over for you. Unless you've got legs. And then you can get out of there like Michael Vick. Michael yeah. Vick will look around. Two, one, two, three, four. Run that, fuck it, I'm off. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and what, happens, what happens? Defensive players and defensive corners are fucked because the players be 350, 200 bit. Bro, you don't want to be running after a guy like that. Yeah, you know. You don't want to be running after a man like that. Brother, stay in the pocket. You're like, stay in the fucking pocket, brother. Don't <laughs> run on me. I'm tired. I'm tired, bro. I'm ready. I'm 20 yards down the pitch. Oh, God. I've got to get, as a defensive lineman, you've got to get back down. I'm not going to get back. Next player, does it again. I'm fucking about. What's wrong with this guy? Cut this guy, keep still. Keep the guy in the pocket. But you can't, because uh, that's what Vic was doing. Psychologically, he was so fast, they couldn't catch him. Like Lamar Jackson, they couldn't catch him. He's running in and out of you guys and making the players the tired. Boy, we've got to interject players. Brother, this guy's that brother come the pitch, bro. I'm not. I'm going to face this guy. I'm down. Now, nah, bro, fuck that. I'm tired. Get me up. Uh, next player goes in. He does the same to the next player. He's two plays. Imagine you do a 15 yard run and a 25 yard run. Both plays. And you're, and you're a defensive line. Bro, I'm not bro. I can't carry this weight and run after a man like this. I'm tired, bro. Brother, you're going to. I'm going gonna, gonna to pick up injuries off these guys. This is what I'm saying. This is the this is the danger about the these scrambling QBs. They will make it's so hot. It's dangerous. Listen, these guys buckle on your knees, they break your ankles, bro. And you're out, bro. Running after a running QB. All ask any defensive lineman at any level. Who would you prefer? A scrambling running quarterback or a pocket passing quarterback? They're all gonna say, oh, I want a pocket passing quarterback, because I can get to him. He can't run. I can crack him up easy. I can brock him up when I get to him. Yeah, and that's what we're coming to do. We're coming to fuck him up anyway. But the guy you look at the rock and, and he can run, you're in two miles. Oh shit, what's he gonna do? But if he goes, he goes back, what's he gonna do? Oh shit, he breaks that part. That's listen, I see Michael Vick, he's on there. He done this on even the player, the player today, he said, I have nightmares because when I go to sleep, and every time in my dream, I always think I caught this guy. But I know that's what he says. He says it today. Michael Vick done this particular Green Bay. Atlanta against Green Bay Packers. And Atlanta never won at, at, um, at Lambeau Field. Michael Vick takes the ball, scrambles. The defensive lineman grabs him, yeah? Grabs him. And Vick does this move, bro. He does this move. It's like a swim move with the ball. And he just drops. Takes off. All the commentators were like, oh my God, we've never seen this. The man had it in his clutch, you know? And Vick was gone. And you, this time, no man's got 40 yards down the fucking pitch, bro. bro you know you got to run after this guy. I've missed him now. I've got to run after him? No, nah, bro. <laughs> this, this is why a lot of these guys retire early. That's why a lot of defensive linemen retire early when they have to come up against players like Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton, Michael Vick, Robert the Griffin Jr. All these guys make players retire because they run. Bro, and, they're, and they're fucking at man's knees, bro. You're 350 pounds, bro. But my knees can't take that shit, bro. My knees can't take yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm out of there. Yeah, man. Uh, next one, next one, next one. I don't know how many is left, but we'll see. Um, hey, Bounty Gate doesn't matter because every team does it. In the aftermath of the New Orleans Saints, in which the league players were being paid for registering hits that knocked 
Yes, they, they were. Opposition players out of the games. There was yes, they were. Controversy that still hasn't died down. While some players yes. were hired at the sound of former Saints defensive, um, what's it called? You know, you know Greg, Greg Williams telling players. Greg Williams, yeah. Kill the head and the body will die. Other players yeah. have named that the Saint, that the things the Saints were doing isn't all that's uncommon in the NFL. Others claim that Williams' words were just the words, were just words, and that they shouldn't be taken too seriously. Not oh, really? To my, not to quote my first grade teacher, <laughs> but if everyone jumps off a bridge, it doesn't mean you should too. Tell us about this Bounty Gate Fives. What's going on? Right, so this Bounty Gate was, was a, a coach named Greg Williams. He was at Cleveland Browns, yeah? Hot-headed coach. Hot-headed coach. Like, like yo, I don't like those guys. I'll yeah, give you yeah, this, yeah. that. You know what? You fuck up these guys, you don't have to come into work Monday or Tuesday. Same. A player's going to take that, but I don't want to come to work Monday. No, so I'm going to I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the incentive and yeah, fuck that guy, that fuck him up and him, yeah? And the game's done and we won. You, you, and you don't have to come to work Monday and you still get your full wage. Right, is that wait, is that what the sense in? Wait, before you go on, I know some people won't like this, but basically Stoke, yeah? Stoke. Yes. Stoke City is the prime example. Man, yeah. So basically mash up man because we can't play with these men. So mash up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that like Stoke City then. You know Stoke City played pure bounty. Yeah. Stoke City is the original bounty club, bro. <laughs> I'm a bounty oh, Premier League now. Okay. Bounty, is that what them man are doing? So yeah, Stoke City was a bounty club, brother. Yeah, they put on man. So like, yeah, man. Man hold on. Didn't Stoke City play you, man? Come on, did Stoke City play you guys when they was in the Premiership and they put us on living tackles on you on your player? So yeah. They don't have to jump on your on your guy. Yeah. I'm sorry, get this up. Match the job, bro. Be out here, different. Bro, who would actually outlawed? You can't. And this is what they had to do with the NFL after that bounty gate. That's this is why they had to clean it up. Can't do not shoe coloring. You can't hit a man like if you take one step and hit the player. Oh, it's a flag. Exactly, you got 15 yards on you. Yeah, but back in the day, when a QB was able to run at a QB. If he's still got his ball in his hand, you can clap him. Now you can't you can't hit him in his head. You can't hit oh, you can only hit him below his chest. You can't hit him in his knees. Because who was it? One of his creepies from um Los Angeles Rams in the final. I mean he I mean he shoot up. I can't remember the guy's name. He gets hit in his knee, blows out his knee, but the league don't do fuck all about it. So Brady gets hit in his knee. We're bringing in a rule and a law. Same position, same position. They're both playing, but one gets his knees crushed out. But we don't do nothing about it. We don't bring in no legislation to him. But Tom Brady, he gets it. No nah, man, oh no no, we can't do that. No 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 no, no, no. He's that star boy. He's the face of the franchise. He's the face of the NFL. No no no. no. We got to bring in rules for that shit. Now. So basically, oh, yes. so basically, you was you was never allowed to hit Tom Brady here. Or at his knees. So the only place you can hit Tom Brady is from chest to the, to the upper part of his knee. What kind of fucking target is that? So did the uh, what's their names? New Orleans Saints. Yeah, they never played Tom Brady. So they never. Yeah, they, I, I, I don't, they're not in the same conference. I don't know whether or not they ever it. met, but you best believe that to outlaw that bounty stuff before before it got to people like Tom Brady before the Saints ever played the Patriots. Or the Saints playing <laughs> the Niners. They had to move those things up because they're like, listen, we've got a couple of star guys here and we can't afford to have them fucked up, bro. We can't. We can't afford that. So here's what we're doing now, yeah? We're going to bring in these laws. So if you hit Tom Brady in his head, you hit Tom Brady below his knee, just know you're getting a suspension and a big hefty fine. So what happens now? When players are going to run Brady, they've got to think twice about tackling him. How can you do that? You're yeah. gonna lose your yeah. life. Yeah. You're gonna get yeah. injured. Yeah. You're gonna pick up an injury. Listen, Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis, baddest, baddest ever middle linebacker. Ray Lewis put some clap on Brady after the game. They go to the locker. Ray Lewis is mad. Ray Lewis is like, yo, basically, what kind of fuck are you up and dealing with? You, 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 this is a man's game. 
This is a man's game. What kind of pussy old thing you're dealing with? This is this game is for men. If you're not a man, don't come here. Don't play this game. Go play tennis. Go play golf. <laughs> Go do the yachting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't play this game. The players are not having the bitch rest. It's those who are seeing it. Oh, man, he's a star boy. Oh, 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 my husband. Oh, my boyfriend. Oh, my son. Your son's getting fucked up. But he chose to play. He's bringing in the money. Yo. 54? No, what about 54? Five on jungle is another place. Five eight seven TV, other lick. Yeah, real TV, reality TV. Five eight seven bar level. Five on jungle is here. Yeah, Godfather. See that one. What's up, people? Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel.